Welcome to the Your Town Television Program. My name is Joy Anderson, Member Relations Manager with the Monterey Peninsula Chamber of Commerce. It's my pleasure today to welcome Jeff Lindenthal with the Monterey Regional Waste Management District. And Jeff is the Director of Communications and Sustainability. That's a mouthful. It is a lot. Well, welcome, you, Jeff. You got it right. Thank you, Joy. <laughs> nice to be here. It's uh, nice to have notes sometimes yeah. because, you know, these tongue twisters. But um, so, MR, WMD, okay, is, is the abbreviation for that mouthful. Right. Um, so give us a brief description of kind of the services that you provide and, and a little bit about the business. Sure. Well, I'll start at the beginning. Okay. It was, it was 1951. And at the time, there was uh, a dump on the beach in what is now Sand City. And, it was, and uh, the, the way ma waste was managed at that time was trucks would come in and dump during the day. And at the end of the day, they'd light it on fire and reduce it to ash and then cover the ash with sand. And the Peninsula Cities got together with the county. Uh, the site was uh, deemed a health hazard. It was overrun with rats. and. Uh, they petitioned the County Board of Supervisors to do something, and the board established uh, what is now known as the Monterey Regional Waste Management District, and our first order of business was to, uh, to site uh, a, a good location, find a location for a sanitary landfill. So we purchased the property that we now occupy two miles north of Marina off Del Monte Avenue in Monterey County, and that site opened in 1965. And okay. um, so the landfill's been operating there ever since. And then over the years, we've added additional programs to, to the services we provide. Uh, yeah, and I think that's where a lot of people don't know. They don't know about those additional services and things. Because uh, most people go, okay, it's out at the dump, and everybody thinks dump, and that's all you do is dump. And a few people have learned about the Last Chance Mercantile, but I'm sure you're going to fill us in on that. But tell us sure. about some of the other things that are happening out there. Well, let's start with the Last Chance Mercantile. Okay. And um, I have a feeling that many of your viewers may have heard of it. Oftentimes, when we're out in the community, it seems that's the program we're probably best well known for. And the Last Chance is an amazing place where uh, one person's trash can become another's treasure. But the idea is to give some of these discarded items a last chance at reuse, and, mm -hmm. and, and as opposed to disposal. So in the, in the waste management profession, the, the hierarchy of managing waste is reduce, reuse, recycle. And so the last chance is where we get a chance to reuse. So we, we try to make it really convenient for the public to drop off reusable goods mm -hmm. on their way to do a dump run or to dispose of materials or just to come up to do that. Uh -huh. And as a result, we, we receive all kinds of things every day of the week. Well, we're actually we're open six days a week at the last chance to receive donations. And every day is different. Uh, you know, from people cleaning out their garages to maybe a couch that uh, needs a new home, uh, furniture, housewares, dishes, clothing. Uh, the list goes on and on, and it's always changing. So a lot of our uh, products in the store come from the donated items that people want to mm -hmm. uh, see reused rather than throw away. And then the other way we get materials is if people do throw away good stuff, we have a crew that gets a look at materials as they're being dumped and will salvage reusable items. Oh, okay, uh, so you kind of pick it out of the... Right, so yeah. we'll, we'll do a little salvaging. That It's, it's a, such a simple idea, but it's almost unheard of in the solid waste industry to actually take the time to pick out some of the reusable goods. Mm -hmm. and you, you wouldn't believe some of the things we've seen. That uh, people just discard. Right. Piano comes to mind. We had a really nice really? upright piano came in come in recently, and it was destined for disposal. Somebody didn't want to take the time to drop it off and donate it, mm -hmm. but fortunately, we were able to capture it and securely transport it over to the last chance and uh, found a new home. So oh, that, that's, that's that's really <coughs> very unique. Um, it and is. It just it makes a lot of sense, though. It does yeah. make a lot of sense. Yeah. And our goal is not to compete with the other thrift stores in the community, mm -hmm. 
but to provide a complementary service and sure. to make it convenient at the point of disposal for people as they as they come in. Mm -hmm. So the last chance is very well known, we, we find, and, and well loved. And uh, that program operates, the store is open Tuesdays through Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And we have a line that starts on Tuesday mornings at about 8.30, people waiting to be first in the store and they to see what treasures there are. What tre what right? What treasures showed up over the weekend that are hitting the floor for the first uh. time on uh, Tuesday morning? Uh, the uh, another really unique aspect of the program is just across the way from the Last Chance is our household hazardous waste drop off site. So if you have leftover paint or pesticides, mm -hmm. motor oil, etc., can all be dropped off there. Um, fluorescent light bulbs, batteries. Uh, so that provides a secure. Uh, drop-off area for those hazardous materials. A lot of the things we get are, in some cases, brand new. Somebody bought the product, but they didn't use it. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they used part of it, okay. but most of it is still there, and it's in the original packaging. So rather than send that can of paint out to be recycled, we make it available, we take it over to, we categorize it, inventory it, and we take it over to the last chance where it's available for free. And we allow residents to take up to 10 items per day. And a lot of the people that are lining up in the morning are going to that area first to grab everything from household cleaners to garden products, uh, you paint, you uh, stains, varnish you, you, for a little fix, fix it project sure, around the house. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's a very popular program. Wow, I didn't even know that part existed. Yeah, and it's one of the ways, again, it's kind of a common sense program, mm -hmm. but it's also one of the ways we keep our costs down. So if we can get these materials reused for the purpose they were originally intended, we don't have to send them away to be recycled or disposed of. Yes, and that's that's a huge cost saving, I'm sure. It is. Yeah, it's good that's, for, good. that's good. Good for that's the community. Okay, so what else is going on out there? You have all kinds of stuff. We <laughs> do. We, we're one of the things that's unique about the district is that we're referred to as an integrated facility for managing waste. So we have our reuse store, the Last Chance. We uh, have been filling in the landfill since 1965, and we've been ex as organic materials decompose in the landfill, they release methane gas, mm -hmm. which is a harmful greenhouse gas. Since 1983, we've had a gas recovery program installed in the landfill. So essentially, we have a whole network of pipes in the, in the landfill, underground, horizontally and vertically, and the pipes are connected to a big vacuum, and the vacuum draws the methane out of the landfill 24 hours a day, and the gas, the methane, is fed into engine generators, and it's burned as a fuel source to produce electricity. So we're producing five megawatts of electricity, which is equivalent, it's about enough, enough uh, electricity to power 5,000 local homes. So that, ele that renewable power is running all our operations out there. A lot of people don't know that about, about the district or about the landfill. So we're energy independent and we sell the surplus power to the utility. So th another one of our innovative programs is the recovery of gas from the landfill. We also have uh, a very robust composting program that's been going on for decades. And uh, we're also now uh, nearly five years into a food waste anaerobic digestion compost program where uh, food waste collected from local restaurants mm -hmm. goes inside this enclosed facility and, and, the and the methane is captured anaerobically. So it basically takes what happens in the landfill over the course of years, sometimes decades, mm -hmm. for that methane to be produced. And in the anaerobic digester, it happens in 21 days. And okay. that, that gas is recovered, and we produce electricity again with that, which is sold to our neighbor, the wastewater treatment plant, uh, Monterey One Water. Um, another new program. This is so fascinating. <laughs> There's a to lot me. going on yeah, out it there. Is. I know. And uh, you were out there last spring. When yes, we did and the I saw the composting and things, but right. you know, for some reason, yeah, I didn't, I didn't pick up on the energy. Well, last yeah, spring yeah. we did the ribbon cutting for a new truck yard facility. Right. And uh, several years ago, the Peninsula Cities decided to send their collection contracts out to bid. They hadn't been bid in many, many years. They wanted to make sure they got competitive proposals from companies. And mm -hmm. uh, there were a number of companies from outside the area that wanted to, 
to bid, but to do so they needed a place to park their trucks at the end of the day. And we know that the trucks are typically ending their routes at our facility. They're right. dumping in the landfill, they're dumping in the recycling facility, uh, delivering to the compost program. So having a, a truck yard there made a lot of sense because the trucks then don't have to drive off site somewhere else and mm -hmm. waste fuel at the end of the day to park. So uh, we constructed a truck yard facility which we now lease to the hauler that serves many of the peninsula facilities. That's green waste recovery. Correct. And uh, we also, as part of that facility, there's a fueling station. So all of their trucks are running on compressed natural gas, which is uh, environmentally beneficial. Uh, CNG fuel uh, is, uh, the trucks are known to be quieter in operation. They're not as loud. And also they require a bit less maintenance. So, so as, as well as reducing greenhouse gas emissions from the tailpipe, it's a much cleaner burning fuel. So. We're proud of that facility. You were there right. for the ribbon yeah, cutting. We, was, yeah, we appreciate that. Was, that. that was marvelous. And, that was great. And the next phase of that facility that we're working on is to take that methane gas from the landfill and bypass the electricity production and instead compress it, clean it up, compress it, and use that to fuel to the fuel local the collection trucks. trucks. Wow. So in the near future, we're hoping the trucks will actually be running on fuel made from material this, they collect yeah. out in the community. So wow. completely a closed loop process. I was um, going to say. Process. Yeah. So, so tell me about what, <clears throat> I know we have this huge project coming up. Right. And I want to make sure that we have enough time to, to talk about that. So. Fill me in. I know this is this is amazing because I know I know about it because you've already kind of given me the scoop. But um, let's tell everybody what's on the horizon. Well, we're working on version 2.0, as we refer to it, of our materials recovery facility. Mm -hmm. Now we we commonly refer to that as the MRF, which is the acronym for materials recovery facility. So if you've ever been out to the district, you've, maybe you've done a dump run on a Saturday or you've come out to dispose of something, you drive into this big 100,000 square foot enclosed facility and you drop your load on the concrete uh, floor, tipping floor. And in the, we, uh, we, we built our first material recovery facility. It opened in 1996 and it had served the community for just more than 20 years and there's a lot of recycling that happens inside there. When, when it opened in 1996, it was state of the art, and it consisted of uh, primarily of, a bunch of, of conveyors that passed through sort rooms, and we would have employees in the sort rooms mm -hmm. that were responsible for pulling materials off the conveyor belts and dropping them down a chute where they would be collected in bunkers. Mm -hmm. And those are materials like wood, metal, um, concrete, uh, cardboard, um, containers, plastic containers, that sort of thing. If you've ever purchased some of our wood chips out there to use in right. your landscape, that, that's made from recycled wood mm -hmm. that was collected in the MRF. Well, after 20 years, that facility was old and tired, and it had become antiquated in the industry. So we are just now, the end of this year, completing a $24 million retrofit of the MRF. We're calling it MRF 2.0, <laughs> and it's, uh, we're installing completely state-of-the-art equipment that'll dramatically expand our ability to re uh, recycle wow. materials from the waste stream. And the, uh, the new process actually consists of two separate processing lines. So as you drive in in the future, uh, you'll see two big conveyors that are separated, that are going up mm -hmm. and then moving through the facility. One of those is dedicated to construction and demolition materials. Okay. So say you're doing a remodel and you're pulling uh, a project apart, it goes in the dumpster, that dumpster comes up to us, and then we'll process that material. Uh, California state law now requires 65% recycling on uh, construction projects, both new projects and also demolition projects. So the construction industry and the uh, city planning departments are thrilled that we have this new processing line coming on that will provide full compliance with the Cal Green Building Code and they'll be able to hit that 65% recycling mandate mm -hmm. that the state has prescribed on the local cities. So that's going to be a huge asset to the community. And the old sort line was only able to achieve about 50% diversion. This new system, we're anticipating that we'll get between 72 and 75% wow. diversion out of a, uh, the debris in a, in a dumpster. So that's exciting. 
and then the other aspect of the facility is there's a, a, a sort line for recyclable materials. So when you put your recycling out at the curb on collection day, in the past, that material's been collected and it's gone to a facility uh, in Castroville or even as far away as San Jose to be processed. And, and ev all the materials that you put in get separated out and bailed up separately to form recyclable commodities sure. that are sold to end users. So for the first time in, in our history, we'll be pro processing the recyclables from the peninsula locally. So we're excited about that for a couple reasons. One is we'll, we'll know exactly where those materials go and what they get turned into. We get a lot of questions from the public mm -hmm. about wh where does, where does my plastic go? Mm -hmm. What does it become? And it's been really hard to follow that trail and track it. Uh, now we'll be in charge of it, so we'll, we'll be able to report back to the community. Some of those commodities also have revenue associated with them. We're able to sell it to the end users, mm -hmm. and that revenue will help us keep our rates down and uh, go right into the district's uh, $27 million annual budget. So the, actually the revenue from the sale of recyclable materials is going to help pay for the, the $24 million cost of the facility. So we, we That's great to be able to offset that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. and mm -hmm. initially we're, the financial projection was that we could, we, could, we could sell some bonds get, and build the facility and pay for it out of the proceeds from the material sales without raising our rates. And uh, so far that's, that's worked out. So we're we all we're like to hear that. that without raising rates. Yeah, it's important <laughs> to be cost effective. We we do work hard at that. Hey, I think we got everybody's attention. <laughs> no, there's some. I mean, there are some fantastic things going on, and you know, unfortunately, we're we're kind of getting towards the end of our time here. Believe it or not, it goes by really fast. We'll have to have you come back and and tell us a little bit more, and as we get closer to this this unveiling of this this new equipment and new facility, I think, yeah. You know, I'd be happy exciting. to do yeah. that. You know, we, our, our mission statement is turning waste into resources, and there's, there's a lot to talk about when, when it comes to um, these materials that we receive and the beneficial things we try to do with them. Well, this is something that's really important, and everybody knows it, and everybody realizes it, and, you know, we, we just have too much waste. Uh, and so it's nice to see that, you know, we're, you're able to do things with some of these things that, you know, are discarded and, and tossed away. Um, but also, you know, a little bit of information so people are, are more cognizant and they think about things, you know, like, like bringing things to the last chance so that they can be, you know, repurposed or reused again. I mean, uh, it's, it's just important information that we can get out to the community, so. I agree, uh, and we'll, we work at that uh, week in, week out, and uh, we'll, we'll continue we'll with We'll continue it. to do that, yeah. As, as you're around town, sometimes you may see bumper stickers with the slogan, it's a small planet, recycle, and those are our bumper stickers, the waste management districts, and uh, Fantastic. That's, uh, that's what we try and do. You guys are doing a great job. I appreciate you being here. Uh, and uh, we'll see you again really thank soon. Thank you, Joy. I'll look forward to that. It was my pleasure, and thank you for having us.